Hi guys. For my undergrad research, I did my, my field school in Ecuador with Janice Knuckles, working with the Quechua people there. And while studying there, I became interested in various aspects of a woman's life. Um, one of the first words and phrases I learned in Quechua was Sinji Warmi, which means strong woman. And I was instantly just drawn to that phrase and noticed how prevalent it was in their society, the idea of being a strong woman. And throughout my undergrad, I've also studied a lot of international development and focused a lot on women's issues and women's rights. And so just, I just felt myself drawn to this idea and this um, topic for my research. And so I started spending a good amount of time um, in Ecuador with women working alongside them and learning that, learning from them and learning why they did the things that they did. And so I, I really started to research about what the effect of women had on the Runa and the Quechua society. And as I grew to love these women and um, work and sweat alongside them, that love in combination with my interest in development and women's rights really led me to explore the effects of women's labor and its great presence in the Napa Runa or Quechua community. In Ecuador, I studied the Quechua language and way of life. I spent my time mostly with women of all ages. Throughout my interactions and experiences with them, I observed a female dominance in the labor that sustained their society. Besides just the normalized ideas of what a woman's labor is acknowledged throughout the world, such as cooking, childbearing, and cleaning. The Runa women also worked hard to farm the crops of their family and produce all things that sustains their society's life. Their labor is symbolic to the way that the Runa people interact with nature and the cosmological system in which they live. The labor of Runa women has a huge economic role throughout their society, but it wasn't purely economical. It also demonstrated a sense of prestige within their culture. A controversial issue has been on the importance and significance of labor in societies. Many have neglected the value of women's labor and the prestige that comes from the labor throughout different societies, and some even refuse to acknowledge women's labor. Others also argue and claim that a men's dominant role in society is represented by destruction, whereas a woman women take on the role of production. I agree with the latter and further argue that in the case of the Napa Runa community in Ecuador, the labor of women is purely the base of their economic system, but also all parts in which they live. The men throughout the society do take on a role of destruction, whereas the work of women dominate in the role of production. For a long time, research in anthropology has neglected the value of women's work, both quantitatively, qualitatively, and even prestigiously. This bias against women's labor has been overemphasized through the importance of exchange within societies, exchange that is mostly dominated by men, in which men take prestige, leaving the production of that exchange, which is dominated by women, to go unnoticed. A male's prestige comes from a woman's ability to produce. To speak out and represent themselves, I, I observed throughout the Napa Runa women that they have integrated aspects of their sex throughout many forms of their production, thus re-emphasizing the importance of their work throughout their society. The bulk of my evidence comes from my experiences and participant observation in Ecuador. I worked with many women in their chagras, each Runa family has their own plot of land that they plant food to eat and sell. Before globalization, this plot of land, the garden or chagra in Quechua, as it's called, was the source of livelihood for the people. Before the times of big cities, supermarkets, and roads with public transportation, families relied solely on what they planted. In an interview with an anthropologist who had lived amongst Napa Runa for years, she said that each family could be completely self-sustaining based on what they grow. So, the importance of that is that the produce grown in these plots or chagras sustains the life of an entire family or village. These gardens are run and maintained solely by women and their daughters. Men do not enter nor help. In fact, one time I was with local children and we were going into a canoe to go over to the chagra and 
We were playing with the boys and all of a sudden none of the boys would come over with us. They were thoroughly enthralled with playing with us, but as soon as we left to leave for the Chagra, they disappeared. This was a pivotal moment for me realizing how big of a separation there was between the labor of males and females. Females also are the sole producers of the ceremonial drink called Asawa. This drink is very significant to the Quechua Runa people as it is a sign of hospitality and a huge part of their diet. It is the women that plant the manioc used for this drink. It is the women who make it by fermenting it. And then also the women create the bowls in which people drink the asawa out of. Creating the mukahas or the pottery bowls and the asawa is a massive part of the Quechua culture that is completely 100% dependent on the labor of women and their work in the chagra planting manioc. As I mentioned in my argument, women have integrated key parts of their gender into their work in a way that represents all that they do, not only in child production, but also the production of the foods and goods used for trading. All seedlings are considered children of the women who planted them. The women sing to them, they speak kind words, they take great care in the process of planting and growing them. Many authors I cited throughout my thesis have also studied this argument of women's labor and the effects of women on a society, and also how women naturally are tied to nature, where men are tied to culture. Because culture is what the rest of the world sees, much of the work of women goes unnoticed and unappreciated. This is one of the great reasons that have led to the oppression of women throughout the world and the stark separation of men and women's labor. Simeon Bidior writes in his book, The Second Sex, that a woman's natural subordinate nature is due to their physique, their body literally being used and slaved to produce a species while also keeping her close to nature. He even concludes that women are more enslaved to the species than a male. He clearly states that the greatest the greater percentage of a woman's body and time goes towards producing life. However, men have the opportunity to assert their creativity artificially through mediums of technology and symbols. In doing so, he creates lasting objects, which explains why male activities include the destruction of living, hunting, warfare, or have more charisma than the female ability to give birth and produce. According to his theory, it's not the act of killing that is relevant and the valued aspect of hunting and warfare, but is the transcendental social and cultural nature of these activities as opposed to the natural process of giving birth. That is what separates men and culture and women and nature. Uh, men is asked to risk his life over the animal or the species, like in war, which is why superiority has been accorded in humanity, not to the sex that brings forth, but to the sex that kills. Women are the primary cultivators of agriculture and create wealth for societies through their productive labor on the land. Yet in many cases, they're still deemed secondary to men. Runa women demonstrate the importance of their work by integrating key parts of what they consider to be important in being feminine or a woman in all aspects of their labor. This way, this labels and defines everything they do as women's work. Um, this is important because it defines and shapes the way that the Runa community um, d interacts with the land and also with other people. I also think that in acknowledging the importance of women's labor is important for all members of every society um, to reflect upon, to reflect upon the mother that raised you and even the women in your life that produce a significant amount of work, but maybe you don't always get noticed by it. Um, an author I quoted in my thesis has an interesting quote that says, when you look at people who start organizations um, and become leaders for social good and social impact, uh, they're often women and they're often workhorses. Uh, women think about children and they think about the future of their children and they work hard to protect that future and to make it a good one. So I think that this topic is important to all, both men and women, and I have greatly enjoyed my time reflecting and also studying the ways of the runa. Thank you for listening.